Hi everyone, I'm Laura Gale Locke. On this edition of Local Loop, we're going to give you an update about a recent survey that was done in Old Town, and we're also going to tell you about what the city's been doing to help Old Town continue to be a safe place for everyone to enjoy. Today we have two guests. We have Vice Mayor Janet Miller sitting next to me, and also Police Deputy Chief Tom Stoltz. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Well, why don't you guys start off by telling me a little bit about what's been going on in Old Town? Well, there continues to be lots of great activity in, in Old Town, including um, things for families and individuals to take part in. And I think the thing that we want people to remember is that Old Town is a safe environment in entertainment district. And certainly there have been some issues recently that we're addressing, but the main message is those concerns are happening between 1 and 3 a.m. in the morning. And beyond that, statistics bear out that Old Town is a very safe place to work, shop, live, and inter go for entertainment. So, But we have been working on some short-term and some longer-term strategies to address those concerns that happen in that small window of time. And I've been working uh, a lot with Deputy Chief Stoltz, who's been looking at some police measures and other things. And maybe yeah. you could give us an update on those. We've, uh, we've got a lot of things going in Old Town with um, dialogue with the businesses uh, and specifically now dialogue with the clubs uh, in the area. Um, the survey that you alluded to at the beginning uh, we've completed. Uh, we talked with several hundred people in the Old Town area who were shopping or frequenting the clubs or living down there and um, by and large the people that live down there and do business down there feel safe and that, and that was a good sign for us after the spring that we had uh, earlier this year. So we continue that kind of dialogue and we'll continue that kind of survey action to keep our fingers on the pulse of uh, what people's perception is in that, in that area and may actually take and expand that survey to outside of Old Town to get outside people's perceptions as well. Uh, the short term strategies that we've done because uh, Old Town has been back in the news again uh, is we, we did ramp up some police uh, presence down there this past weekend. Um, uh, probably doubled the amount of uh, police officers uh, on the ground, uh, reactivated the mountain unit down there. So we're doing some very tangible, uh, overt kinds of things that people will notice when they go down to, to maintain the safety level. Uh, it was a very quiet weekend. We had a, a couple of arrests down there. But when you look at an area that entertains that many people in that small of an area, um, and, and if you look at entertainment areas around the country, Old Town is very consistent. Uh, with what goes on around the country and it's very consistent with what goes on inside of this city. Uh, it is as safe as any place inside of this city uh, 22 hours of the day. If the two hours uh, that we are concentrating on very heavily now are the hours of 12.30 a.m. to 2.30 a.m. on Friday, Saturday and Sunday mornings. Now that coincides with the clubs closing down at that time and that's where we've seen the issues that have been brought forward with shots being fired into the air and those kinds of things that we're going to focus on. But uh, the message that we tried to put out the past week and the message we try to put out today is Old Town is safe. If you want to avoid that type of crowd or that type of propensity of activity, then leave at 1230 at night uh, and, and you'll have no problem at all. So, but even that, that's not an excuse. We can't, we shouldn't allow, we can't allow uh, an area to become dangerous even for one hour a day. So we're focusing on that with some extra enforcement efforts now. And then uh, we're also looking at long-term solutions down there. Uh, uh, changing the environment, maybe changing the business practice. I think council will have to wrestle with maybe some ordinance changes down there if that is the will of the businesses and merchants down there. We'll be bringing all that forward uh, as we work through this, but um, the area is great to work with. The people down there are great. The people that live there are great. And 99% of the customers down there are great. You have a very small percentage of people that can ruin a good time for a lot of other folks, and that's what we're going to concentrate on over the next several weeks. I know you guys said this, these incidents are taking place in a very specific time frame and on certain days, but is it targeted to also a specific location? That's a great question. Yes, it is. Um, even the study we did back in uh, April and May last spring when um, uh, we had a series of events down there that were violent in nature showed that the 200 block of North Mosley uh, area between 1st and 2nd Street on Mosley Street is um, 
higher than other areas, a lot higher than other areas, even in the Old Town District. So we're focusing on the environment and the geography of that location as well. Um, all of that is uh, being incorporated into the study and uh, we'll try to come up with a solution either through ordinance or behavior or maybe um, cameras or technology or a combination thereof to, to enhance the safety and, and, and uh, make even that area uh, uh, more safe than it is now. What would you say to people who might be wondering what's going on with this particular area? Why do you think it's happening here? I think it's a combination of things. I think there are um, some nightclubs in and around that area. Now this is, a, keep in mind, this entertainment district. It's all nightclubs down there. And uh, anybody that goes to Old Town knows that there's merchants and vendors and stores open there. Um, and then at a certain time of night, the club environment kind of, kind of takes over. And that's very consistent with entertainment venues around the country. Um, so what we're focusing on there is what clubs are in that location, uh, what environment, I mean, is it dark down there? Do we need lighting? Do we need uh, to trim some trees? Do we need to make it, do we need more police officers down there? Do we need cameras? So we'll take a look at the whole venue. So I don't really have an answer for you yet on what it is in that specific area. We have some suspicions and we're working through those. But, uh, and that's where the ongoing dialogue becomes important with uh, those areas that are in that uh, particular geographic range. And some of it has to do with crowd control. There are, when the clubs let out in that area, there can be in excess of a thousand people that come out into that area. And by na human nature, when you have that many people that late at night, many of whom have been consuming alcohol, you have really an environment that can is conducive to, to, to difficulties. And so part of what the police have been experimenting with is way, different ways of moving crowds, controlling traffic, making sure we don't have cars circulating through that area, which can kind of add to the, the confusion and the difficulty, trying to get people to move on to their cars, um, and close down the evening. So part of it, I think, is just by nature how many people are in one particular area at, at one time. Let's talk about that a little bit more. What did you guys do exactly to adjust traffic flow? Well, one of the things that we've, uh, that we've noticed down there is uh, about 1 or 1.30, we'll get people come into the, into the area uh, who haven't come out of clubs, who are coming from outside, and they're not going into clubs and just kind of hanging around. They're just kind of loitering. So one of the things that we looked at this past weekend and we'll continue to look at in future weekends is maybe about 1.30 or quarter till 2, uh, literally restricting some traffic flow through there. Um, for example, shutting off 1st Street at the bridge and, and not allowing eastbound traffic onto 1st into that core area there. Um, but yet we also understand that um, we have people coming in to pick up other folks uh, who may be down in that area. So it's, it's tricky how we do it, but we're trying to uh, stop the loitering and the cruising into the area at clothing, closing time, which makes the problem that we just discussed with a number of people coming out of the clubs, mixing then with a number of people coming in that are loitering or just looking for trouble. Uh, we want to take at least half that formula out, which is the people that are coming in to loiter. So we experimented with 1st Street, 2nd Street. Uh, we'll experiment with Washington and 3rd Street and, and just see uh, what is the right mix or what we can do to minimize that amount of recycling traffic going through the area. Do you guys think the problems could at all be gang related? I think statistically we've seen there's no evidence of that yeah. at this there, point in time. I mean, I've asked the question several times and the public asks me that question and so I always go straight to the experts <laughs> in the data collection and... Yeah, the, the manifestation of crime down there is not gang related that we've seen. Now, do gang members go down to Old Town? Sure they do, just like they go to Town West and Town East and Newmarket Square and Bradley Fair and every other venue in the city. Um, but are they the impetus of the problem down there? I don't, we cannot say that statistically at this time, nor do I really believe it. I think what's going on right now is the dynamics we've talked about where a large influx of people into a street, many of whom have, are intoxicated or are well along the way of being intoxicated, an infusion of people coming from the outside looking for uh, trouble or who knows what, and those mixing together during a very small time window in a week is, is creating some challenges. But I think it's a challenge that 
if we focus and we have good dialogue with the business, good dialogue with the clubs down there, can maybe change some business practices, maybe enhance the environment a little bit, I think we can get on top of it. So how do the crime statistics compare from last year to this year in the Old Town area? Well, we, uh, we constantly monitor, monitor um, crime statistics, not just in Old Town, but around the city, particularly in, in areas around the city that host a lot of um, entertainment uh, uh, venues or any neighborhood that's experiencing what they perceive to be a crime increase. We, we rely heavily on data. Uh, so as we monitor the data in Old Town, uh, for example, when we compare the last four months of this year to the last to this, uh, same four months of last year, in other words, we compare June, July, August, and September of 2011 to 2012, we see a very flat line of crime. There are a few increases uh, on some person-to-person -person kinds of robbery that have us concerned. We've gone up to, to nine robberies over the summer. Um, but our number of violent assaults, our number of weapons violation are very flat line when you compare to this time last year or the time the year before. So if we begin to see spikes in trends, then we will tweak our resources and we will tell the community what's going on and we try to, try to stay on top of that. And I think that's one of the things that was surprising to us over the last um, two or three or four weeks while this continues to get attention in the media, there was no statistical data to show that kind of concern. Uh, now, any time you have a shot fired in an air, in, into the air anywhere in this city is a concern because those bullets land somewhere. So surely we're concerned about that in Old Town, but it happens all over the city and we'll address it as it comes up. So nothing has really changed statistically down there that we could determine. One thing that is consistent though, last year when we looked at it, the hours of 1230 to 230 on Friday, Saturday, Sunday mornings were high. The 200 block of North Mosley was high and that has stayed the same and we need, we're going to have to get a handle on that and try to fix that. So even during those hours and on that block, it's safe 24 hours a day. I remember the last time we talked about the survey you guys were doing, you um, had mentioned that you guys were going to be looking at some other peer cities to see how they handle it. Have you guys been able to get any good ideas from them? We, we're always stealing, yeah. We're, we, we look at other cities and we've, honestly, whenever we do peer city study regarding uh, how we deal with businesses or how our council deals with businesses, we always find that Wichita is really at the top of the heap already. Um, there are some good ideas out there though regarding business practices and I know that some of the clubs that are in Old Town area, they reach out to other entertainment district areas in Oklahoma City or Omaha and ask them for good business practices. So they're there, there's ideas, but it takes a cohesive effort here to implement. Um, especially amongst the clubs and then to some degree to counsel with any ordinance changes which benefit um, the, the operations down there. So um, we always reach out and we're, and we're looking for, for better ways to do business. Vice Mayor, I understand you've been talking to some business owners in the area. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. As these issues arise, we make every attempt we can to, first of all, return any phone calls that, that we receive and also to reach out proactively and talk to business and property owners. I routinely attend Old Town Association meetings, which happen once a month to try to stay on top of what all is happening in Old Town, including all of the events and shopping opportunities and new businesses coming into the area, and then to address concerns. And we have, uh, we've, in response to the issue that's developed here recently, we have reactivated some meetings with club owners, um, which we've had previously when, when we have issues. We've reactivated those. Um, we've also formed an internal task team. M much of, of the um, actions that you just heard Deputy Chief Stoltz refer to have kind of bubbled up out of that internal um, task team. Um, so we're, we're continuing to, to, as he says, talk to and communicate uh, continually um, with property owners and club owners, business owners in the Old Town area as, as well as making sure that all of us in, internal to the city are knowing what's going on and who's doing what and how to coordinate all of our, our efforts. So it's a very cohesive, intertwined approach. Yes, we definitely want people to know that the issue is on our is on our radar and that as Chief has really described it the, the problem occurs in a very narrow window of time in a specific area and we don't want to downplay that 
obviously all the things that we've talked about here this morning that we're working on to tackle that issue. But the rest of the time, Old Town has great places to be. The weather is turning off nice now where all of the outdoor patios, a number of the restaurants downtown have increased, in the Old Town area have increased their patio size. <laughs> so it's a great time to be outside. We're moving into the fall and winter movie season here pretty soon. So there'll be lots happening at, at the theater. And of course, Final Fridays, if people haven't been down to experience a Final Friday, we've got the September and October um, Final Fridays coming up this fall and those will be great opportunities for people to stroll and look at art and enjoy the last of the splash fountain before it gets turned off for the winter and mm -hmm. lots, lots to look to forward do. to. Can we talk a little bit more about the survey um, that you guys did? Did the survey just focus on people's perception or what all did the survey ask people? It was a perception um, survey. Whenever, whenever we look at an area uh, and there's a perceived problem, we always rely on two levels of analysis. Number one is we look at crime statistics very um, uh, vigorously. And the second thing we always do is we try to ask people. We try to get a perception study, uh, usually in a form of a survey of people that frequent that area. And that was what this survey was done for, was to get people's perceptions of, of what they thought of Old Town as far as safety, uh, why they were there, age and demographics, those kinds of things. So that was the purpose of this uh, survey. And I think it's healthy in areas to do that every so often, whether there's a problem or not, just so you can kind of maintain and keep a handle on things. Old Town is a part of downtown, and downtown, uh, by and large, is just a little bit different animal than other peripheral areas of the city. So we patrol a little bit differently downtown. We uh, have a, l a little bit different uh, strategy of, of safety downtown. And so this was just an extension of our, of our greater downtown uh, uh, enforcement efforts. So uh, as Water Walk develops and as uh, Delano develops, we're going to continue to do surveys in those types of areas as well. So we, it, it allows us a non-adversarial contact with people. In other words, the cops aren't there because there's a problem. We're there because we just want to know what's going on and it gives people a chance to talk to us on the front end. So that was a big reason for that survey. And I think one thing that the group, the internal task force group, uh, is going to realize, and I think we've already realized it, it's probably, when you say task force, you think something's going to begin and something's going to end. And I don't know that it's ever going to end. I think we'll continue to have a meeting and a dialogue with Old Town Association and, the, and as the number of residential areas increase in that area we'll probably increase that communication but I think not just in Old Town but in downtown particularly there's going to have to be an ongoing dialogue for a long time about how we can um, live and work and uh, entertain ourselves down there in a safe manner I just think that's good business. So, Vice Mayor, what do you see as the City Council's role moving forward to help keep this partnership going? Well, the City Council is a policy-making body, and so certainly we would work hand-in-hand -hand with staff, business, and property owners to consider policy changes, ordinance changes that might help address some of the concerns and some of those issues that we've heard from um, business and club owners, um, property owners, is to, you know, look at um, age of people in the area, in the clubs. Um, is there a way that we should address that through our entertainment ordinance? Um, looking at changes potentially to a loitering ordinance. How, how is that ordinance written and how does it compare? You know, we have one ordinance for the whole city. Should we have something different in this particular area or for at certain times? Um, we're also looking at um, um, public disturbance ordinances, that kind of thing, to see if there are changes we might make there. Um, so we know it can't all be solved through policy and legislative change, but if we hear that there are suggestions that we ought to consider, we certainly will do that. We don't want to over-regulate, but we also want to be responsive to what the police recommend and also what business and property owners club owners in that area want us to consider to improve mm -hmm. or, or even increase the safety of the area. Mm -hmm. And Chief, you were saying you know, that this is kind of going to be an ongoing process, but what should people expect to see happen next? Well, I think what you'll see in the, in the short term here is um, a lot of officers down there. Um, you, and one thing about downtown and Old Town being included in that, it's very conducive to mounted unit patrols, so we'll activate horses more often. And you'll see officers on foot in that area as well, or on bicycle, non-traditional uh, kinds of enforcement tactics. So I think 
over the next few weekends you'll see that kind of action. Uh, and then uh, we may run another survey up, up the pole out there, uh, so you may see some uh, interactive kinds of things going uh, on between people and officers and that nature. And then we're going to take a hard look at some ordinance changes and uh, there'll be a, a heavy dose of dialogue with the club owners over the next uh, few weeks. Um, and it's not just for, uh, for this year, but it's for next spring and next summer and the future as well. So. Is there anything that people can do to help out? Well, sure, uh, and we always tell people, last year when we had the discussion about the Old Town area, the one crime issue that is higher in Old Town than in the rest of the city is larceny from auto. Uh, so when you park your vehicles down there, um, be sure to put valuables into the trunk area, or better yet, don't even bring them into the area. Uh, leave leave uh, computers at home and those types of things, and if you have a handbag or satchel, take it along with you inside the club or secure it in some way. Uh, and then um, if, you, if you choose to be out there, and you're welcome to stay as long as you want until 2.30 a.m., just be very vigilant and cognizant of what's going on around you, the same as you would if you were at one of the malls or shopping in any area of the city. Uh, be aware of your surroundings, and if you see a crime happen, report it to police and be a good witness. Um, so the, the same uh, uh, suggestions we give for anyone that lives in the city or uh, in any area of the city. Good reminders, for sure. Is there anything else you guys would like to add before we wrap up? Just to remind people that we'd love to have them come to Old Town and there's plenty of reason to feel safe and secure and to enjoy the experience and as my grandmother says, if, if you're concerned about being out late, don't be out late. <laughs> Great advice. <laughs> Head home. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's been a very interesting conversation. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And thank you for watching. As we leave you, make sure to keep it tuned to City 7 and then also make sure to visit wichita.gov for the latest information about future surveys and Old Town updates.